Last time, we discussed about how simple interest differs from compound interest. This time, we will calculate interest, maturity value, future value, and present value in simple and compound interest. At the end of this video lesson, you are expected to compute interest, maturity value, future value, and present value in simple and compound interest environment. If you are not familiar with the following words, we can use a certain situation that can define those. Let's say, after New Year, the total gift money that you received from your ninongs and ninangs amounts to 5,000. You decided to invest in a bank that offers an annual rate of 5% compounded annually and also decided to withdraw all of it after 5 years. This situation involves compound interest. In the last video lesson, you are taught how the interest are calculated in this type of interest. The table shows how your money matures as time passes by. After 5 years, your money will incur interests and will become 6,381 and 41 centavos. The money you deposited is called the principal amount or the present value. The money that you will withdraw after 5 years is called the maturity value or the future value of your money. Since we already defined the unknown terms, we will now continue with our main topic. If R is the rate of interest per period and P is the principal that yields a simple interest, how can we solve for the future value A after T periods? To find a better way to solve it, Instead of creating a table of maturity values and future values like we are doing before, let us take a look at the following derivation of formula. A principal P is lent to someone that pays an interest of R per period of time P. The interest after one period is P times R. Thus, the interest after T periods is P times R times T. The maturity value A is the principal value P plus the incurred interest P times R times T. Based on that, we can conclude that if R is the rate of interest per period and P is the principal that yields a simple interest PR after T periods, then the future value A is computed as A is equal to P plus PRT or a is equal to P times the quantity 1 plus R times T. Now, let us apply what we learned in the following problems. Compute for the simple interest for each. Let us begin by writing the formula for the maturity value of simple interest. From what we have learned, the maturity value A can be computed as A is equal to P plus PRT. But in these problems, we are looking for the interest. Since the interest is the maturity value without the principal amount, let us simply remove the principal amount from the formula of the maturity value. Hence, interest is equal to PRT. Substituting the given, we have 40,000 times 0 0.03 times 8, and using our calculator, we have an interest of 9,600. Now we proceed with the second problem. We start with writing the formula, then substituting the given, then calculate using our calculator. So the answer is 52,500 pesos. Next, let us repeat the process for the next problem. Begin by writing the formula for interest, then substitute 200,000 times 0 0.045 times 10, and encoding the given in our calculator, we have 90,000 pesos. We are done with deriving and applying the formula for simple interest. Let us proceed in deriving the formula for compound interest. How can we compute for the future value A sub n given the principal amount P and periodic rate I after n periods? As you observed, we are using periodic rate I instead of interest rate R that we are using in our simple interest formula. Later, I will explain how they differ from one another. For now, let us use the periodic rate I for our interest rate. Let us study the table. 
the future value of a principal amount P with a periodic rate I after one period is A equals P plus interest P times I or P times the quantity 1 plus I. We are dealing with compound interest. Therefore, the principal amount for the second period will become P times the quantity 1 plus I. Since A is equal to P times the quantity 1 plus I is our new principal value, then we can say that the future value after the second period will become our new principal amount P times the quantity 1 plus I times 1 plus I or simply A is equal to P times the quantity 1 plus I squared. Repeating the process for the next period, we have A is equal to our current principal amount P times the quantity 1 plus I squared times 1 plus I or A is equal to P times the quantity 1 plus I cubed. Following the logic, we have after one period, A is equal to P times the quantity 1 plus I. After two periods, A is equal to P times the quantity 1 plus I squared. After three periods, A is equal to P times the quantity 1 plus I cubed. Therefore, after n periods, the future value A is equal to P times the quantity 1 plus I raised to n. We now have our formula for the future value of compound interest. So, how exactly the interest rate differs from periodic rate? Let's take a look at the following example. A principal amount of 20,000 pesos is invested in a bank that offers 6% annual interest compounded monthly. What will be the future value after 5 years? This is a compound interest problem since it says that the interest is compounded monthly. But what does compounded monthly means? This means that the interest will add up every 12 months or 12 times a year. Take note that 6% is our annual interest rate. We need our periodic rate, this time our monthly rate, since it is compounded monthly. So how can we solve for our periodic rate? If you are thinking that the periodic rate I is 0.06 divided by 12, then you are correct. Let us try to solve this problem. We know that the principal amount is 20,000. Our periodic rate will be 0.06 over 12, since it is compounded monthly, equals 0.005. And the number of our periods will be 12 times a year for 5 years or 60 periods. Substituting our given in our formula, we have A sub 60 equals 20,000 pesos times the quantity 1 plus 0.005 raised to 60. Typing this in our calculator, we have 26,977 pesos, rounded off to the nearest tenths. Let's answer more examples. Calculate the interest for each. In number 1, we have a principal of 15,000 pesos with an annual rate of 6% compounded semi-annually for 8 years. Compounded semi-annually means the interest adds up twice a year. Therefore, our periodic rate is 0.06 over 2 equals 0.03. The number of periods will be twice a year for 8 years or 16 periods. Substituting the given, we have 15,000 pesos times the quantity 1 plus 0.03 raised to 16 equals 24,000 70 pesos and 60 centavos, rounded off to the nearest tenths. What we calculated is the maturity value A, but we are looking for the interest. So, interest is equal to the maturity value A minus the principal amount P. We have 24,070 pesos and 60 centavos minus 15,000 is equal to 9,070 pesos and 60 centavos. Our next problem has a principal amount of 50,000 with an annual interest rate of 8% compounded quarterly for 10 years. Compounded quarterly means that interest adds up 4 times a year. Therefore, 
our periodic rate is 0.08 over 4 equals 0 0.02. Our period is 4 times a year for 10 years equals 40 periods. Substituting our given, our maturity value is 110,401 pesos and 98 centavos rounded off to the nearest tenths. So the interest would be 110,401 pesos and 98 centavos minus 50,000 pesos or 60,401 pesos and 98 centavos. I hope you learned something from this video lesson. Thanks for watching!